فَلَا تَهِنُوا All of these verses, what do they teach us? Do not feel weak. Do not be scared of the enemy. Apparently, they have so many resources, they have so many people, they can do so much to harm you, but realize that all of their efforts will be wasted. So don't be afraid of the enemy. فَلَا تَهِنُوا So do not weaken. لَا تَهِنُوا وَوْهَنُونَ وَهَنْ What is وَهَنْ? Weakness. Right? Or it can also be from the word هَوْن. هَوْنُونَ And هَوْن is to feel small. To feel you're of little importance. You're not of much worth. So لَا تَهِنُوا Do not have low self-esteem. Be confident. Don't feel weak. Feel strong. لا تهنو. This is so empowering. Because the Muslims had basically fled from Makkah to save their lives. And now they were in Medina. And even there, they were not safe. Again and again, the enemy was coming. There was constant you know, danger. And Allah says, لا تهنو. Don't be afraid. Because the first thing we need to correct is our mindset, our thinking. If we're afraid, of an enemy, if we're afraid of a task, we'll never be able to deal with it. Isn't it? And if we feel confident, if we feel strong, then yes, we will try to do something. So, فَلَا تَهِنُوا Don't feel weak. Don't have low self-esteem. وَتَدْعُوا إِلَى السِّلْمِ And as a result of that, meaning as a result of that weakness, call towards peace. وَتَدْعُوا there's an implied la over here. Because wa, it's connected with previous. It's connected with fa. So, fala tahinu wa tadru as in wala tadru. Alright? Don't weaken. And as a result of that weakness, don't call to a salm. Meaning, don't call your enemy to a salm. What does salm mean? Salm, salam, peace. Alright? Basically, salm is truce with the enemy. Peace treaty with the enemy that will agree to not fight. Allah says, don't call your enemy to a truce. In other words, what should you do? Fight the enemy. Wa antumul arlaun, while you are superior. Al arlaun is a plural of the word a'la. A'la is higher. One who is higher, one who is superior. So a'laun, those who are superior. Meaning when Allah has made you superior, then you don't need to call for a truce and feel weak. Remember that wallahu ma'akum and Allah is with you. وَلَنْ يَتِرَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ And He will never deprive you of your deeds. يَتِرَكُمْ From the root letters wow ta ra witr. What does witr mean? Odd. Right? And what is Witr basically. You know, when two things, one is taken away, you have one left. So that is witr. So, watara is to reduce something, to cause harm to someone. So, لَنْ يَتِرَكُمْ He will never lessen, He will never reduce أَعْمَالَكُمْ Your deeds, meaning the reward of your deeds. He will give you the reward of your deeds in full. So, expect great reward from Allah for your striving. Now, what do we see in this verse? First and foremost, لا تهنو That there will be difficulties. But in these difficulties, do not lose resolve. Do not lose hope. Because when you will feel weak from inside, then your efforts will also weaken. Feel strong inside. And where do you get that strength from? By knowing that your Lord is Allah. By knowing that you are working for Him. This will bring you inner strength. And when you will feel strong inside, then your actions will also be stronger. In Surah An-Nahl, Ayah 128, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ Indeed, Allah's help is with those who fear Him and those who do Ihsan. So you don't need to feel weak. Rather, focus on Ihsan, on excellence. The second thing we learn in this ayah is, the Muslims are being prohibited from calling their enemy to truce. Now, isn't it that Islam is supposed to be a religion of salam, right? Isn't peace preferred over war? Isn't that so? Isn't that so? But here we see that Muslims are being told, don't invite the enemy to a truce. It seems like the exact opposite. 
It's as if battle is being preferred over peace. Right? Remember what I told you at the beginning of the surah. Contextualize and do not generalize. Alright? The verses of the surah. Remember this is at the beginning of the Medinan era. Right? This is before the battle of Badr. This is before any major battle was fought. Muslims are being prepared to fight their enemy. Alright? Now, what this means is, وَتَدْرُوا إِلَى salm That when you encounter the enemy, meaning the enemy is right in front of you, they've come to fight you, at that time, don't start offering them peace. When they've come all the way to fight you, then at that time, don't start offering them peace. Because if you're offering them peace at that time, what does it mean? You're chickening out. You don't want to fight. You're afraid. You're scared. That's what it means, right? So, do not call to peace at that time. You must fight the enemy and remember that you will have the upper hand as Allah is with you. So in situations where you are alone, where you have strength, you have the power to fight the enemy, then do not make peace over there. Alright? And remember that in certain situations, making peace is better. As we will see in the next surah, Surah Al-Fatih. Surah Al-Fatih is about the treaty of Hudaybiyah. That is As-Sulh. Isn't it? And in that treaty was what? No fighting for the next 10 years. And the Prophet ﷺ agreed to that. Correct? But who, who offered that peace treaty? Who did? It was the Mushrikeen. Right? So the idea over here is that when your enemy is in front of you, then show your enemy that you're not scared. When your enemy is in front of you, then do not offer peace at that time because it will show weakness. Be strong. And if you're afraid that you will not be able to deal with the enemy, then remember that you're not doing this on your own anyway. Who's with you? Who's with you? Allah is with you. Right? And if you think about it, any challenge, if you have the option of not accepting the challenge, right, and just stopping, discontinuing, and if you go for that option to discontinue, what does it mean? You are afraid. Isn't it? It means that you are afraid to continue. Correct? And if you keep going, what does it mean? You're determined to win. You're determined to win. You're not afraid. You're not scared of the difficulties that will come your way. And if you say, no, no, I think I will stop at level number two, and I will leave with $2,000, right? All of these shows that you guys watch. So what happens? If you're leaving so early, that means you're scared. So, لا تهينو, do not feel weak. وَتَدْرُوا إِلَى السَّلْمِ And as a result of that weakness, call to peace. No, don't do that. There are other times when peace is preferred. And there are verses about that. And we see that in the life of the Prophet ﷺ also, that where a treaty was accepted, salm was preferred. Correct? So, depending on the situation, either peace or battle. Innama, indeed only. al dunya the worldly life. Indeed, the worldly life is only la'ibun wa lahwun. It is just amusement and diversion. It is la'ib, it is play, wa lahwun. What is lahu? Something that distracts you. Distracting amusement. This is what this life is about. So if you keep chasing the dunya, you are keeping your money with you, you're keeping your time with you, just focusing on yourself to enjoy your life here. This is just la'ib and lahu. It's not going to get you very far. It's not going to get you very far. وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا And if you believe in Allah, وَتَتَّقُوا And you fear Him, يُؤْتِكُمْ أُجُورَكُمْ He will give you your rewards. Plural of the word ajr. وَلَا يَسْأَلْكُمْ أَمْوَالَكُمْ And He will not ask you for your properties. Meaning you strive in the way of Allah, you believe in Him, you fear Him, Allah will recompense you in full, and He is not asking you for all of your properties anyway. He is not in need of your wealth. How much zakat does a person have to pay? What percentage? It's so small. Right? So, لا يسألكم أموالكم Meaning Allah, Allah is not in need of your wealth. He is not in need of your striving. He doesn't need you to serve His deen. In if يسألكموها If يسألكمو 
Yes, Al. What does Yes, Al mean? He ask. If he should ask, Kumu, you all. All right. This Wow over here, Ishbar, is basically for the ease of pronunciation because Yes, Al Kumha. All right. Yes, Al Kumha. It's kind of difficult. So Yes, Al Kumuha. Yes, Al Kum. If he should ask you. If Allah should demand from you, O believers, ha it. What does ha refer to? All of your amwal, all of your properties. Meaning if Allah were to demand from you that you give 100% of what you possess for His sake, and then, فَيُحْفِكُمْ And then He would press you. يُحْفِكُمْ ha fa ya hafa hafi. يَسْأَلُونَكَ كَأَنَّكَ حَفِيٌّ عَنْهَا يُحْفِكُمْ حَفَى is basically to search for something, to be curious about something, to look for something very eagerly. And basically, there is mubalagha in the effort. This is why the word hafi is used for a person who is very, very curious. Meaning his mission in life is to find out about something. So he's going to ask one person, ask another person, research here, research there. Look here, look there. He's not going to leave it. Right? So, hafa, ihfa is to basically exaggerate in doing something. Okay? Ahfa su'al. Ahfa su'al is when someone asks repeatedly over and over again. Allah says, إِيَّسْ أَلْكُمُوهَا فَيُحْفِكُمْ If He were to ask you, if He were to demand from you, all of your properties, not just once or twice, but press you to do it. Demand from you again and again in the Qur'an, through the Messenger. Basically not leave you until you hand over everything that you have. What would happen? Tabkhalu. You would become stingy. Because it's only natural. When somebody asks us over and over again, what do we say? No, no. The more you ask me, the more I will say no. Isn't it? You've experienced this in your life? You know when somebody asks you something once and you're like double-minded, but you say no. Like your younger brother maybe, he asks you for something. But then he asks you again and again. You say no. Why? Because why is he asking me? He shouldn't ask me. You forget about what he's asking for. You're saying no simply because he's asking you again and again. This is very natural. That you know, when someone nags us again and again and again, then we kind of shut them out and we don't entertain them anymore. Right? So, فَيُحْفِكُمْ He would press you and as a result, تَبْخَلُوا You would become stingy. And then what would happen? وَيُخْرِجْ That would be bad for you. How? That he would bring out أَضْغَانَكُمْ He would expose your unwillingness. أَضْغَانَكُمْ أَضْغَان is a plural of the word دِغْن ضَاد غَيْن نُون and what is dhirn? Hidden hatred, rancor, meaning feelings of dislike that a person has kept in his heart. Yukhrij adghanakum. He would expose your hidden, your hidden dislike. And dhirn, remember, is that dislike which a person is determined to conceal in his heart. Determined to conceal. When a person makes up their mind, I'm not going to show it at all. It's very hard, but some people are very good at it. Right? They say, I'm not going to show it at all. Allah says, no matter how hard you try to conceal that unwillingness, يخرج, He will expose it. So who's going to suffer at the end? You will. What's the meaning of this ayah? Don't you trust your Lord? Allah wants good for you. Anything that He's commanded you to do, He's ordered you to do, whether it is to give in His way, or to strive in His way, any command... It's good for you. Because He does not demand from you what you are not capable of. When we are encouraged to give charity, we're encouraged to spend in Allah's way. Right? We are told to give zakat. How much is it that we are supposed to give? 50%? 70%? 20%? No. 2.5. Very little. So, why do you look at the commands of Allah as if they're a burden? When Allah instructs you to do something, why do you take it as a burden? Oh, this is so difficult. Oh, I can't do it. Why do you have that kind of attitude? 
Because Allah does not demand everything from you. He could if He wanted. And your life would be very difficult and you would suffer at the end. But Allah has made His deen easy and practical. So have positive thoughts about His deen. You know, generally we have this uh, fear about the deen, that it's difficult. Many people do. And there's this fear mongering basically. Like for example, before Ramadan came, what happened? Huh? Yeah? The fasts are too long. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, there is work. Oh, there is school. Oh, there are exams. Oh, there is graduation. The list goes on. Yes, this is life. It's there. But Allah has not demanded something from us that is impossible, that will cause us to die. No. Yesterday, I took my kids to a restaurant to get their dinner. And this was like two hours or so before iftar time. And as before I walked in, I was like, how is that going to be? Because you know, I was hungry. And that food, it just smells too good. And when it's a halal restaurant, everything's halal. And you know, it's kind of difficult. So I went inside with a lot of sabr. I went in, placed the order, took a while. And it's a Muslim restaurant. People who were working there were all Muslim. You could see on their name tags. And I was admiring those people. I mean, how in that heat they are standing, preparing all that food, packaging it, selling it. You could see the fatigue in their eyes, the exhaustion on their faces, but they're just working and working and working. Amazing. And, you know, as I was watching those people, I felt so pity for them. Like, honestly, I wanted to do something, you know, just to show that they're doing something very, very big. And I was like, if I'm feeling like that, then imagine how much more mercy Allah has for His servants. Isn't it? Isn't Allah more compassionate than even our mothers are to us? Isn't He? So firstly, Allah does not demand the impossible from us. So anytime you say to yourself, oh this cannot be done, please give that a punch. Don't accept it. When Allah says do it, it means it can be done. It's not impossible. The barriers are where? Inside here. Those barriers are not real. They're inside. They're made by us. They're fabricated. They're all invented. So the first thing we need to do is realize that if Allah has commanded us to do something, it's not impossible. It is possible. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. You know how Islam is such a natural religion, like it's on the fitrah. I know two non-Muslim ladies who decided to fast. And I was so surprised because it's such a long, and I said, are you sure you can do it? No, no, we want to do. And one of them, she's Christian. She's not taken her shahada, but she's working towards it. And she said, you know, before I get into it, I need to purify myself. And I was thinking, how does she know about the fast being something that's going to purify her? Just because Islam is such a natural deen, and she felt that she had to fast, these long fasts, and then take the shahada and enter into Islam. Subhanallah. So, إِن يَسْأَلْكُمُوهَا فَيُحْفِكُمْ تَبْخَلُوا وَيُخْرِجْ أَضْغَانَكُمْ Assalamu alaikum. I was thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sent Musa alayhi salam to Fir'aun, Allah said to Musa, You are the high, anta al-a'la. Here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He telling us, also, antum al-a'laun. So we have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He telling us, no matter what, if you have iman, you are the highest. So just remember to say, Rabbi shrah li sadri, whenever you do da'wah, whenever you fear Yes. So correct your mindset. Realize that the deen is not impossible, it is possible, and Allah's help is with you, so be confident and be proud of your deen. Allah says, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Who made us? Allah. Who knows our wus'ah? He does. So, does it make sense then, that He would tell us to do something that we don't have the capacity for? It's illogical. Does it make sense? I mean, why would Allah command us to do something that we cannot do. Why? He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't. So if there is anything in our deen, remember it's doable, it's practical, it is possible, and it's good. Because لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. This ayah, what is this teaching us? That when Allah is asking so less 
from us, so little from us, then why should we not respond? Why should we not be eager to run towards Him, to strive in His way? Ha antum, here you are. Ha ulai, these people. Meaning, look at you. To da'una, you are being invited. Litun fiqu fi sabilillah, so that you can spend in the way of Allah. You are given an invitation to spend in the way of Allah. How? Is Surah Muhammad an invitation to spend in the way of Allah? Basically it was. Because this surah prepared the Muslims to fight their enemy. And when they were going to fight their enemy, where were they going to get their money from? From their own pockets. Right? Whatever they had, they had to use that to defend the religion of Allah. So Allah says, that ha antum ha ulai to da'una li tunfiku fi sabilillah, faminkum, but among you are mayabakal, those who are stingy, those who withhold. And you keep your money only for your worldly needs and wishes. Yabkhal. You're stingy. Wa may yabkhal, and whoever is stingy, fa inna ma yabkhalu an nafsi. Then he is being stingy towards who? Himself. عن نفسه بخل he's doing بخل against who? against himself بخل against someone is what? that you're not giving them something you're depriving them بخل عن نفسه يبخل عن نفسه meaning he's depriving himself not spending in the way of Allah is depriving who? the poor and the needy? the religion of Allah? no, it is depriving oneself of the rewards وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ And Allah is the rich one. وَأَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ And you are the poor ones. فقراء, plural of فقير. He is the rich, the one who has treasures from which to give. And you are فقير in need of his mercy, of his reward, of his favors. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ And if you turn away, you turn away from responding to Allah's call, then remember that يَسْتَبْدِلْ he will substitute, he will replace. قَوْمًا A people, غَيْرَكُمْ Other than you. يَسْتَبْدِلْ بَدَ لَمْ Badl, to change. يَسْتَبْدِلْ right? He will remove you and bring someone else in your place. يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ He will bring another people in your place. And ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ Then they will not be the likes of you. They will be different from you. They will be better than you. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ أَمْثَال plural of مَثَل What do we learn in this ayah? Firstly, the importance of spending in the way of Allah. Not just our money, but our time. Letting go of our ego. Letting go. So that we can do something for the sake of Allah. And we see the definition of bukhl over here. What is stinginess? Stinginess, is it that a person doesn't spend on his clothes and on his food? No. Because even the most stingy person will buy something to feed himself. Right? Even the most stingy person will get something to wear. Right? What is the definition of stinginess? What is bukhl? What is bukhl? The one who is not spending in the way of Allah. He might be spending hundreds and thousands on himself, on his desires. But when it comes to spending in the way of Allah, then he gives little or he doesn't give there. This is stinginess. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the worst characteristic that is in a person is restless stinginess. Meaning such stinginess that makes him restless, that doesn't let him spend at all. And stinginess brings many, many problems. When a person is just concerned about fulfilling his own desires, and he's not concerned about the greater community, then this will bring many problems. The Prophet ﷺ said that when people become stingy with their dirham and dinar, meaning with their money, they just keep it to themselves, and they begin purchasing many expensive things, and they begin to follow the tales of the oxen, meaning they're just busy in agriculture. And they abandon jihad fi sabilillah. All of their money is going where? Where? 
on themselves and they're not striving in the way of Allah, then Allah will send on them trials, bala. And He will not remove those trials from them until they return to the deen. So, وَمَن يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّمَا يَبْخَلْ عَن نَفْسِهِ Whoever is stingy, then he's only harming himself. So don't hold back. Don't deprive yourself. Another thing we see in this verse, the last portion of this verse, that وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمٌ غَيْرَكُمْ That if you refuse to come forward, if you refuse to spend in the way of Allah, then does Allah need you? Does the deen of Allah depend on you? No, it does not. Allah's deen will continue with you or without you. It doesn't depend on you. But if you deprive yourself, then you are to blame. Because if you turn away, Allah will bring someone else. Allah will bring someone else. That place is not going to stay empty. It's not going to stay vacant for long. You know, for example, if there's a great job opportunity, how do people apply for it? How? So eagerly, right? Or if there's some, you know, like this big visa case in Canada, that if you want to apply for your family to get visit visa, then you have to do it within, like you, have, you want to sponsor your family or something. There was a big issue about it. You have to do it within... You know, there's a certain date when you can submit applications. And if you do it the next day, it's too late. It's too late because the entire quota is filled within a couple minutes basically. People are ready, waiting there, six to eight, twelve hours before even the door opens and within minutes, the whole quota is filled. The more eagerly you want something, the more you try for it. Isn't it? Because you know that if you don't make your way in, somebody else will. And when somebody else will, you will lose your spot and you will suffer. We need to look at the deen of Allah in the same way. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمٌ غَيْرَكُمْ If you're not eager to go forward in the deen of Allah, then you are only holding yourself back. You're not harming the deen of Allah because somebody else will come and do the work. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ And then those people will not be like you. They'll be better than you. In Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 133, Allah says, إِنْ يَشَأْ يُذْهِبْكُمْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ وَيَأْتِ بِآخَرِينَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ قَدِيرًا Allah can remove all of you people and bring another creation and Allah is all capable of doing that. You know, like it is said that opportunities are never lost. Someone will take the one that you miss. If there's an opportunity somewhere, and you don't take advantage of it, it's not gonna get lost. You know why? You didn't take it? Who will? Who will? Somebody else will. So you have to decide, is it important for you? Do you want it? Does it matter? And if it's important, then what are you waiting for? If you wait too long, that opportunity will be taken by somebody else. And then you'll be deprived. So anything that's beneficial for us, we're eager to have it. And the deen of Allah is most beneficial for us. So we should be eager to have our share, right? In contributing to the deen of Allah, whatever that may be. Because at the end of the day, it's going to help us. It's our honor, right? You know the, alhamdulillah, with the new campus, there was this leaflet that was made with different parts of the school that could be sponsored if people want to put their share in. Do we have it here, Sister Sadia? I just want to tell you a story about it. It's not a fundraiser, okay? We don't believe in fundraisers. Because for yuhfikum, you know yuhfikum, or when you're pressed and pressed. So there's a whole breakdown on how much it costs for the classrooms, students, education enrichment and there was actually a previous one that was made and there was a section on how much it would cost to equip one classroom and also the musalla slash library all right and there was a whole breakdown about it and people were talking about okay you know what let's get together and take care of one classroom let's get together and take care of the musalla one person came forward and they asked, 
how much does a library slash musallah cost? And they were told about it and they said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. MashaAllah, they took care of it. The next day, somebody else asked. Just 24 hours later, somebody else asked that they wanted to take care of the musallah slash library. And they're like, it's taken already. That part is taken. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't give. Sure, you can. But the main chunk has been taken already. So sometimes, just because we're waiting too long, what happens is that we lose our opportunities. So let us not delay. Any good thing we can do, even if it's a little, for the deen of Allah, for the sake of Allah, it's our honor. Because if we don't do it, who will? Who will? Somebody else will. You know, maybe we don't feel it that much. Imagine you you go to a store and you see a very nice sweater. That's exactly what you were looking for. But as you're trying to reach it, somebody else is in your way. All right? And then they reach the sweater before you. And they get the size that you need. And that was the last one. How would you feel? How would you feel? Would you feel angry with that person? I would. Certainly I would. So, you know, we're very attached to sweaters and the things of this world. This is why we're eager to run to them before somebody else can. But these things are what? Larib and lahu. Correct? The real treasure is the treasure of the akhirah. So do not delay. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمٌ غَيْرَكُمْ سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته